Okay, here we have the ear. First off, the ear is divided into three parts. You have the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The outer ear goes from the outer portion that you see through the auditory canal all the way to the eardrum, which is the tympanic membrane. The middle ear is going to extend from that tympanic membrane. It will include the auditory ossicles, the malus, the incus, and the stapes, the bones that are in that middle ear. So it's just this section right here until it gets to the round window. And then the inner ear is from the round uh, window to this interior portion here. It contains the cochlea and the semicircular canals. So if we go back to the outer ear, the external ear, you've got the pinna or the oracle, that's cartilage, that's what your ear, what you see. And then it contains, as I said earlier, the auditory canal. What it is doing is funneling the sound waves and directing them to the tympanic membrane. When the sound waves hit the tympanic membrane, what's going to happen is that it's going to start to vibrate. As it vibrates, it's going to get the malus vibrating, then the incus, and then the stapes these three auditory ossicles, these three bones in the middle ear. As they get vibrating, what happens is it's going to amplify those sound waves. And then the stapes will then get the round window, which is right here, to start uh, vibrating. And then that's the division between the middle ear and the inner ear. <coughs> Excuse me. The sound waves are then going to then progress into the cochlea. That's kind of the snail-looking shell right here. And inside here is where you have the hairs that will start to vibrate because of the sound waves. And those are the receptors for hearing. So the receptors for hearing are in the inner ear in this uh, cochlea structure right here. Now, the semicircular canals, as you can see, there's three different of these canals in different orientations, and that's going to help with equilibrium in your spatial orientation. Are you upright at an angle, laying down, etc.? So both receptors for equilibrium and hearing are in the inner ear, but they're in different locations. The cochlea has the receptors for hearing, the semicircular canals for equilibrium. One thing I want to mention from a clinical standpoint is the middle ear here. This should be filled with air, not fluid. And if you notice right here, this canal right here, that is your station tube, also known as the uh, pharyngeal tympanic tube. They keep changing the name of it. This would be an adult ear. Look at the angle that it's at. Where does this drain down in the back of the pharynx? I said this should be filled with air. When you swallow, when you're going up in elevation and you hear your ears clicking and you feel that change in pressure, it's helping to equalize the pressure in the middle ear with the atmospheric pressure. If this becomes clogged or blocked in any way, you can have pressure build up in the middle ear. If you have an infection, oftentimes what happens, especially with a bacterial infection, is you end up with pus building up in the middle ear. It's not supposed to be there. Where does it go? It starts to push onto the eardrum or the tympanic membrane, and it will actually be bulging out. We can see that when we're a uh, physician is observing your ears. In extreme cases, if the pressure builds up too much, it may actually rupture the tympanic membrane, which will heal. Uh, obviously, you don't want it to rupture, but if it does happen, it can heal. For children, sometimes you may hear if they have chronic ear infections, what they will end up doing to help so that you don't have fluid buildup in the middle ear is they will place tubes in. What they're doing is placing a tube through the tympanic membrane here so that it will drain out. So what they do, if we take this out, is they put the tube through this membrane, just right through here. The angle of the eustachian tube is different between adults and children. In young infants, the angle is not nearly as strong. It's more horizontal. 
just because of the ratio of the, the skull bones are still growing, etc. So as you grow and increase in age and development, it gradually that tube goes down more at a higher angle. Because it is more horizontal in young infants, that is one reason why uh, the recommendation is that you do not feed an infant a bottle or juice or any type of liquid, say drinking from a bottle, with them lying completely flat. Have their head tilted up a little bit to prevent fluid from basically backflowing up into the middle ear and then increasing chances of ear infections.